Marty and Lisa were in Barbara and my UMY group. It must be 40 years ago, I guess. I don't know. But I, but you can't be old enough to be a grandfather. That's what I thought. Twice. <laughs> Can we please have the entry of the life?
nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He You may be able 
to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all flying, flaming arrows of the evil one, and then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He's telling us these are things that we need to do. And as I listened to that and thought about it, wondering where we are at times in our lives, you gotta realize there comes a time for us to fight. There comes a time for us with all that we've got, we've got to do it and we've got to fight now. That's the time. It didn't mean yesterday, it doesn't mean tomorrow. It means now for us to fight. And fight in this spiritual battle that our souls are in. And the key to winning uh, this battle is to have the right battle in focus in our minds. And also to have the right enemy in clear view of what we're fighting. Because it said there in the 12th verse, if you remember it read, it says, and our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of the dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You see, Paul was writing in the first century, but we're reading it in the 21st century. It sounds very current, doesn't it? In our lives. So when it comes to the spiritual battle that we find ourselves in every day and every moment of every day in our lives and any accommodations of, of the devil's aggressiveness that we have will cause us if we accommodate that it will cause you and me to wind up another casualty on the battlefield of the heart we're going to lose you see satan's aim and his ultimate goal in his end is to destroy us. That's his aim. It's all around him. And he's like what I found in, in Peter. When you read in the first Peter in his letter, he says some things to you and me that I think are important for us today. And reading those from first Peter, this fifth chapter, the eighth verse, listen to what he says. Be careful. Be careful. Oh. Peter's right. Now, the ball is shut up. Peter's picked up. Be careful. Watch out. Watch out for attacks from Satan, your great enemy. This is Peter telling them in the first century what we need to be telling us ourselves today. He goes on to say he prowls around like a hungry, roaring lion looking for some victim to tear apart. A roaring devouring our precious lives and in the only task on the devil's agenda today. That's his agenda. The same goes for everyone else around us. They're in the same position for the place that we are. But I find out that sometimes sleeping people don't fight for their lives. Only awakened people fight for their lives. I want to get us awake. I want us to wake us up and fight for others in prayer and in loving action as well as we do this. It's important for us. And I can say, yes, Virginia, there's a spiritual war going on out there today. Worse yet, that spiritual war is also going on in here. It's going on in our hearts in yours and in mine the war is there and in our mind and in, a, in my mind and in your mind and in your body and in my body that war is going on right today and all that god gives and means for good and for joy and flourishing in our lives you got to realize the enemy of our souls is relentlessly working 
everything possible to drag us into the chaos of the world. Now, think about it. Realize we are living today where there is no neutral ground. It wasn't like being in Richland Creek in a beautiful place. There are no neutral grounds today. We either believe in an enemy or we don't. Every single day, you and I are either alert to the devil's schemes or we aren't. Every single day, you and I are either winning our battle or we're losing it. Every single day. You see, one of the things that I want us to find out this summer with the Spirit is because the Spirit, if you heard read a while ago, the Spirit wants us to win. And that's with an exclamation point. Maybe two of them. And the Spirit gives us, gives us the weapons in which to win with, and the weapons is the Word of God. This right here. That's what He gives us. It's important for us. The fullness of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The gift of the scriptures and the Spirit speaking to us as we read through those and let the Spirit guide and direct us. It gives us in order, we have to have that Spirit helping us in order to do it, in order to win the battle, in order to fight. So I want to drive home a point today if I get nothing else done. So, and I don't want us to miss it. You see, we are delusional. That's the point I want to make. We actually believing in something that's not true. You're here today because you believe in something that is true, and that's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's important for us. And I'm going to talk later about the second half of the gospel in another series that follows this, but that's another time. But as we think about this, you got to realize people are falling left and right, aren't they, today? Not only falling spiritually, but falling health-wise as well. Every day, in thousands of small ways, we sort of fall. People who think the world is fine as it is are to be rather candid as they walking blindly in their lives because people are dying every day from one of the things would you believe this they're dying from the lack of love they're dying from believing satanic and demonic destructive lives that are thrown at us all these lies that come in you see we you and i fall bit by bit. We don't make a great crash. We just sort of slip down slow until one day we pass on asleep to God and God's spirits in our lives. We sort of get lulled in our lives to this hypnotic trance by disordered desires and by self-absorbed patterns in our lives. We sort of just sort of meander down the slope away from where God wants us to be. You see, some people even take their own lives to escape the struggle. Do you realize how much the increase of suicide has been since we started the pandemic? That alone, you got to realize people can't stand to be isolated in a lot of ways. They become depressed and all of that, and the depression leads them to other ways. They lose the war. They lose the fight. They don't have the spirit. And others, have become anesthetized in their pain when they've done it by taking myriads of addictions in their lives and taking on broken personal path, personality patterns. <laughs> but I want us to know something. But just, most just hope bad things don't happen. We, some people walk around with rainbows in their eyes and I pray that's wonderful, but you gotta realize that the devil is alive and well and doing what he wishes to do and destroying us. And they have this hope that bad things don't happen and that good things do. Realizing they're asleep. 
their sleep to the battle that's raging within and all around us. There's a battle inside of us. Today, all of us have. And what can cut through this mesmerizing sound of hell's Pied Piper that is playing out to our world? What's going to cut through that? The sword. It's on the front of your bullet. The sword. The spirit of the spirit can cut through that sword. They can cut through it. The word of God can help us be living and active and alive in our world today. Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews saw it eons ago, writing in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, twelfth verse, and he says this sharper than a double edged sword. You should realize there's two writers that have the same idea. Sharper than a double edged sword, it penetrates even to divide. This is what it divides dividing soul and spirit. And it also divides joints and marrow. And it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That's what the sword does. That's what the sword of the spirit does. The writer of Hebrews says, Look, we have that sword of the spirit. You see, Jesus, remember, remember being in the wilderness? He was confronted. He can he actually withstood every one of the accuser's temptation to him that time in the wilderness, in the desert. And he withstood it with the word of God. You, you read it, it's what he was using. So today, our church, and you, and me, are given the same offensive weapon. If you notice, when I read to you the armor that you were putting on, most of those armors that we find in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, are defensive weapons. But there's one that's offensive, and that's the sword. He said, take up the sword. You see, you and I are designed to weld the sword of the Spirit. We're designed to put out the Word of God. We're designed to speak the Word of God that really and truly hides the Spirit in our heart and obey the Spirit that speaks to us in the moment when it's be least expected, but the Spirit does it in the time and in the place when we need it. So that you and I can share the Gospel, that's important for us. And to be ready to offer it hope at any moment. And we have to, as you were singing while ago, by the way, y'all sang beautifully. Did you know that? I could hear you. I was just enjoying listening to you. And that's one of the things that the Spirit says to us. You and I have to sing the Word of God. It's important for us. Wake up in the morning singing the Word of God. Go through your day singing the Word of God. And the other thing is, we're to teach the Word of God in our actions. Do you realize, I told you, you heard me right about it. I'd rather see a sermon walking. It for guests is smarter than I than anyone, all right? I'd rather see, see it walking than here in any day. And we have to sing the word of God as well, as, as I said. But the other thing is we have to offer, we have to write it and we have to offer it and we have to share the word of God in everything that we do in our lives. And it's the sword of the spirit, the word of God, for such a time as this. August 2021. Such a time for us. In the midst of our chaos, in the midst of our valley of the virus that we're going through, in the midst of all the, the unrest that's going on, he says, share. Use a sword. Cut away the bad. Bring out the good. And may God bless us all as we take up his sword and do as he requires of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
now is printed in the bulletin. Wonderful works of life.